Okay, guys, I'm going to go through the setup quickly. I did want to do a track guide, but when I do an overlay of the um, replay camera, I can't do talking at the same time, which is a bit of a fault with the chair factory. We're going to go through the setup quickly anyway. The tyres, we're going to leave quite high. Not too high, though, so that, that should be good for race in race trim. Um, obviously, maximum braking. We obviously put the brake balance towards the front with the heavy braking because with mechanical failures on, you really can downshift fast, so you want a bit more of a front bias to stop the rear kicking out. Obviously, if you're going to be running mechanical failures on, you're going to have to be a little less aggressive with the downshifting that I did on that video then. Um, brake mapping, we went up one just to give a little bit more stability, again, for that aggressive downshifting. Um, gears maximum, there's not much else you can do with that other than just put it to the maximum for this car. Um, limited slip, I had it on 10%. If you're finding it a little bit loose, just down it to maybe 8 9%. Or if you want a little bit more freedom on acceleration, up it slightly. Um, we... Up the deceleration assist because we had ABS on for this um, video to 80%. Just for more um, stability under heavy braking again. Um, preload, 80. Again, if you're struggling with traction loss out of acceleration coming out of corners, up that to 100 maybe. Um, viscous lock, I, do not, I, do, I don't touch that. I don't like that on at all. So I always have that on 0%. Radiated down to 0% again because we have mechanical failures off. If you're going to have it on... Make sure that's up to at least 15-20%, I'd say. For qualifying laps, you should be okay on 5%, but for the race, up it slightly. Um, the bump stops, we went slightly higher on the front, again, slightly lower on the back, just to give a bit more stability on the rear. But we've obviously gone quite high on the bump stops because of the curbs on Monza. Um, again, through the suspension, most of the suspension settings, I tried to just soften the rear up a bit, just to give a bit more traction coming out the corners and a bit more grip. Also through the um, change of direction on the last chicane, the fast change of direction, I found if it was a bit stiff the rear, it was losing the back end and spinning. So I softened the rear up a bit just to give a bit more stability on that corner there, which I think actually helped us out on the lap that, that I did, as you can see from the video. Um, ride height, I slammed it right down to four. I did try slightly higher, but I found it was just didn't seem to have the ground effect that I wanted. So with the R8, You've got enough X speed anyway of this car, so slam it to the floor, get as much traction and grip as you can through the M suspension. Um, again, stiffness, we went softer on the rear there, as you can see, just to give more grip to it. You'll see it's a trend, but I've tried to give more grip for Monza. It's not really a corners-based track, it's more about traction coming out of corners. That's why I've gone softer on the rear. Um, cambers, I've equaled it out. I did try lower on the rear, but I found that the rear wasn't so stable like that, so... I've upped it to 1.3 to match the front, and it feels nicely balanced like that. Again, the toe and the the um, rear toe and the front toe, I've, I've pretty much left as what I always have it on, 0 0.0 and 0 0.3. Downforce minimum for this. That's why I've gone quite low on the um, downforce and also altered the other settings because I've gone very low on the downforce. Um, as usual, force feedback is standard. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave you a little replay of the lap from the far chase camera, which some people may use, just so you can see the lap from that view. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and I'll look forward to doing another video soon.